Hey, my name is Ronald and this is my software journal. Let's just get into it. Let's get into the fifth problem of this series. Pascal's triangle level two. We're still on a recursion. Here's the prompt. Given an integer row index, return the row index, zero of index row of the Pascal's triangle. In Pascal's triangle, each row is the sum of the two numbers directly above it as shown. All right, that's cool. Let's get into example one. So we have the row index of three. So the output should give us one, three, three, one. All right, example two. We have a row index equal to zero. So the output should give us one because this is at the very top of the Pascal triangle. All right, let's get into example three. We have a row index of one, and it's gonna give us one, one, okay? Because that's the second row in the Pascal triangle, so that makes sense. The constraints of this problem is the row is index is between zero and 33. All right, so let's get into the first approach of this problem. All right, so for the first approach, let's create a function called return array. All right, so let's write that out here. We're gonna do private list type integer return and then we're going to put the parameters as row and len len being the length of the array that we want all right so that's that all right step number two let's get into the call and get ray function and create a variable called len so that's what we're going to do here i'm going to do int len and len is equal to row index plus one so this row index plus one is going to be the length of the array that we want to return you can think of it as this, as we go down each level, the maximum length of that array is gonna be the row plus one. And also for this step, we're gonna return the output of the function return array here. So we're gonna put the row index for the first parameter and we're gonna put the len here. All right, number three, before we implement more logic into the return array function, we're gonna create another helper function and this one is going to be calculating the cells or the elements in the in the pascal triangle right below the function return array we're going to do a private and this one's going to return int and we're going to do return we're going to call this return row call value all right and it's going to set the parameters int i and int j all right so now we're going to go back to the return array function and this is where we're going to create a dynamic array. In there, we're gonna give it a list, give it integer type, and we're just gonna just call it array. And we're gonna give it a new array list and just to initialize it. Uh, also, we're just gonna return that as well because that's what we're gonna be returning towards the end of the day. So just before the return, we're gonna implement a way to fill up this array with the values that we need to return. So we're gonna implement a for loop. This is how we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna give this a for loop here. We're gonna call this, let's just call it J, is less than len. And we're gonna increment J by one. And in this function, we want to fill up the array by adding for each iteration, the return row call value. And we're gonna give it the row and we're gonna give it the J. Close that out and that should be it. As you can see with the implementation in the for loop, the row is actually gonna stay constant and J is gonna be incrementing one by one for each iteration. All right, step six. Now we're gonna be implementing some logic into the return row column. And because we, you know, again, the spirit of recursion for this series so far, we're gonna be doing this recursion style. Of course, when we're dealing with recursion, we're gonna to have to have a base case and we're also gonna have a recursion relationship. So the base case for this particular problem would be if j is equal to zero or j is equal to i, then it should return one. But and as you can see on the Pascal triangle, we know the edges and we know the top. This is pretty much set true for base cases. Now we need to get into the recursion relationship. When it's not those particular base cases, we want to do the recursion relationship and recall this function until we get the base case. And then we're gonna get the resolution of those return calls. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. So we're gonna do else. And we're gonna return, return row call plus return row call 
All right, in the first return row call, we wanna to go to the previous row and we wanna take that column to the left value. Then for the second one, we wanna to go to the previous row as well and take that current column value. This is gonna pretty much give us the calculation of the previous row because we need the previous row values in order to calculate the current row. All right, and that's pretty much it. Let's run this and see what we get. Technically, this is a valid solution. It's just a matter of the time complexity to run this code would be crazy long. Crazy astronomical time complexity, which is horrible. We don't want that. In order to reduce the cell calculations, because what is happening is for each row and each column that it needs to calculate, it's doing those calculations over and over again. So we need to make a way where we can save or cache those values over again. So in order to reduce the duplicate calculations, we need to use a technique called memoization. Memoization is just a fancy word of caching data or calculations. What we'll be caching is the duplicate calculations so we don't have to go back to that cell again and recalculate it for the next iteration of the columns. For the next step, we're gonna add a global variable and this is gonna be a two-dimensional array. We're gonna give it gonna be a two-dimensional array and we're gonna call it memo. And then in the next step, we're gonna go into the return array function and we're gonna initialize that memo to dimensional array. So here we're doing memo is new, and we're gonna give it the len, len, because the maximal length of the array will be the length of the array at the row index. Even though at the first row, it's not gonna be you know, the length of that row, but it's gonna get that value first at that coordinate of the row. As it gets down into the Pascal triangle to the depths of it, it's gonna give us the length of that row index. During editing this video, I realized there was a better way to implement the memorization technique for this algorithm. So for the rest of the video, this is just a correction of what I did to simplify this technique implementation. So if we return back into the return row call value function, then we're just going to implement the memorization technique in there. First thing we're going to do is get rid of this else statement. Then we're going to add an additional if statement saying this. If memo at i j is greater than zero, then return memo at i j coordinate. So if you can think about the initialization of this two dimensional array, everything is going to be initialized at zero. So when a value gets input into that array, then it gets cached. When that value is greater than that initial value of zero, then it's gonna be returned back to the return function. So the last bit of the technique, if none of those if statements are hit, then we wanna actually calculate the memo at that particular coordinate. So that's what we're gonna be implementing here. So memo at ij, then we just wanna return the evaluation of this recursive relationship. And then once we get the value of that, we wanna return memo at ij. So let's submit this and let's see what we get. I'm gonna to try to butcher this time and space complexity as much as possible. Here we go. Time complexity of this particular problem will be on average O of n squared. Cause I'm taking into account of the iteration in the for loop when we need to add the values to the array. Also taking into consideration of the recursive calls. Even though we have a memorization technique in, in order to reduce the duplication of the calculations, it still will run at average of n squared. So the space complexity for this one would be O of n squared. And the reason behind that, because we allocated additional two-dimensional array. If I was to go back and like reevaluate that, I would say I'd probably just do a one-dimensional array, making it where the space complexity will be O of n, n being the row index. We don't really need to store those values entirely for the space complexity. We just need the previous row to calculate it. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you got some value from this video. If you got some value, make sure you give a thumbs up and also comment down below what's the best solution for this problem. I also did this iteratively and I kind of did somewhat the very similar approach as well with the base cases. Check that out and I'll be in the link in the description at my GitHub. So until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.